For over six decades, Vin Scully was what baseball sounded like. Hi there, everyone. I'm Jeff, and this is Plain English, where JR and I help you upgrade your English with current events and trending topics. You're all learning English, and part of learning a language is learning the culture where the language is spoken. And this is one of those days where you'll learn a little something about American culture that I bet you didn't know. Vin Scully was a baseball broadcaster for the Los Angeles Dodgers. He was on TV and the radio for 67 years. He retired in 2016. But he died recently, and so today we'll talk about Vin Scully's life's work broadcasting baseball on the radio. And in the process, you'll hopefully learn a little something about our culture that's not quite as well known outside our borders. By the way, this is lesson number 496. And JR has uploaded the full lesson content to plainenglish.com slash 496. We have an English expression to talk about today, too. You'll hear that in the second half of the lesson. To understand why Vin Scully was such an icon in American culture, it helps to understand a little more about baseball and the radio. Because more than any other sport here, and possibly around the world, baseball feels and sounds right on the radio. First off, it's a slow game. There's plenty of time during a three-hour game for the narrators to describe what's going on. Second, the game is very structured. There is one player per position. The game is divided into nine parts called innings, each with a home and away half. Each one of those halves has three outs. In most plays, only one thing happens at a time. Everything has a name. Everything can be recorded and retold. There are a lot of statistics that describe the game and each player's performance. So unlike soccer, basketball, or even American football, the game's structure lends itself to being told rather than seen. Anyone who knows the game can picture the action just from an announcer's voice. For most of its history, baseball was a daytime sport. Games started in the early afternoon because the fields didn't have lighting. So many people would listen while they worked, while they were driving, or while they were doing their daytime chores. And there is a game every day. In American football, for example, teams play just once a week. You can make an appointment to watch that on television. But a Major League Baseball season is 162 games long, 10 times more games than a football season. So a lot of fans catch games on the radio throughout the season. Fans listen to games while they do yard work, while they're at backyard barbecues, on fishing trips, or just while they drift away to sleep at night. 
finally, the radio is free. In the early days, television was not as common as it is today. In the 1980s, baseball games moved on to pay television. Now, they're also on streaming services. That all requires payment. But the radio is and always has been free. Each team has its own set of broadcasters who call the games for radio stations in their regions. And for many people, the hometown radio broadcasters become the voice of the team. Sometimes the broadcasters stay for a long time. And that is how it was for the Brooklyn and later Los Angeles Dodgers. In 1950, Vin Scully had just graduated from Fordham University in the Bronx, New York, where he was born. He played baseball in college, but he really shined as a broadcaster. He helped create the Fordham University radio station, WFUV, which is still a popular New York area station today. And he was one of its first stars, broadcasting Fordham Rams baseball, football, and basketball. He got a few opportunities doing professional broadcasts as a recent graduate. But then he got his big break. He was invited to be the third member of the Brooklyn Dodgers broadcast team. By 1954, he had the top job. And in 1958, the Brooklyn Dodgers moved to Los Angeles, bringing the national pastime to the West Coast for the first time. Vin Scully went with the team, and he called Los Angeles Dodgers games on the radio and television until his retirement in 2016. When he retired, he had been broadcasting Dodgers baseball for 67 years. He also broadcast playoff and World Series games for a national television audience. The red-haired Scully had an instantly recognizable voice and his own personal style. Many broadcasters would openly cheer for the home team, but Scully always preferred to narrate the game without that kind of Homer emotion. He treated each broadcast as if he were relaying the details of the game to a friend. He always said he was inviting listeners to pull up a chair and listen with him. Toward the end of his career, he treated listeners to stories of the famous players he knew in the past, Willie Mays, Hank Aaron, and others. News of his death started to spread on the night of August 2nd. It came out after the East Coast games were done, but while the West Coast games, including the Dodgers game, were still being played. During the Dodgers game, of course, and then the whole next day, the team broadcasts and the sports news and talk shows were all full of tributes to probably America's most famous sports broadcaster. Baseball was once America's most popular sport. It no longer is, but it does have a prominent place in our culture. And the people who bring it to us, especially on the radio, when there are no images to distract you, 
those people are a big part of how we enjoy the sport. When I was a kid, I had a bedtime and I had to be in my room, in bed, with the lights out at a certain time. And if the Yankees game was still going, I was allowed to listen to the game on the radio. But I had to be in bed. And so I had a radio by the window. This sounds like it was forever ago, but it's true. And I positioned the antenna and got WABC from New York and listened to John Sterling and Michael Kay narrate the Yankees games. And that was the case for so, so many young fans. Well, now I'm spoiled because I can listen to any team's radio broadcast in the MLB app, including the Spanish language version too. I watch a lot of games, but I listen to them too, while I'm driving, cooking, working, or just lying in bed. You don't hear that much with other sports. You don't hear about kids staying up late to listen to NBA basketball games. I think you just need to see a basketball game to enjoy it. When you treat someone to something, you give another person something enjoyable. You give a good experience. This isn't a very common phrasal verb, but it is a good one to know. Today's lesson was about Vin Scully, the longtime Dodgers broadcaster. He was in the game from 1950 until 2016, a total of 67 years. And in those 67 years, he had a chance to meet and get to know a lot of famous players from long ago. He had lots of good stories about players like Willie Mays and Hank Aaron, later Kirk Gibson and others, stories that were never written down, things that were never known about them. And during the broadcasts of more recent games, Vin Scully would treat listeners to stories about those famous players from long ago. He would treat listeners to stories. He would give the listeners something entertaining. You'll want to use treat someone to with things that a person can give or pay for. Sometimes someone can treat you to the movies. That person would invite you to the movies and buy your ticket. You can treat your friend to dinner. You invite the friend out and pay for the dinner. You can treat your kids to ice cream. You take them out, you pay, you and the kids all enjoy it. You can even treat yourself to something. We tend to use this for small luxuries. I treated myself to a massage, you might say, or to a day at the spa. Or I treated myself to front row seats at the game. You gave yourself, you allowed yourself a little luxury. Now again, this isn't very common I think I covered the basics here, and here are the main categories. You can treat someone to stories. You can treat someone to a shared experience, like a meal, coffee, dessert, the movies, tickets to a play, something like that. And you can treat yourself to small luxuries.
Today's quote is from Vin Scully himself. He said, As long as you live, keep smiling because it brightens everybody's day. Indeed it does, and he smiled through his voice on the radio and television for over six decades. Wow. As long as you live, keep smiling because it brightens everybody's day. Well, on September 3rd, JR and I will treat you to a special version of Plain English for lesson number 500. September 3rd is a Saturday. We will be doing lesson number 500 live on Facebook and Instagram. You'll get to see us both on camera. You'll hear JR. He will have a speaking part in the big 500th lesson. So you'll want to save that date, September 3rd. It will be in the morning here, 8 a.m. in Chicago, 9 a.m. in New York. So that means it's mid-morning, 10 o'clock a.m. in Brazil, afternoon in Europe, nighttime in Asia. September 3rd, don't forget that date. And you can get all the details at plainenglish.com slash 500. That's where you can connect with us on Instagram and Facebook so that you can watch the live stream. You can see the exact time. You can add it to your calendar. There are no excuses to miss this September 3rd. So get the details at plainenglish.com slash 500. And we will see you on the live stream on September 3rd.